Okay, what we're going to do is give you the basics on how to tie the old Hank Roberts, I guess, domino, ginger quill nymph with the overhand weave. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to tie this on a way oversized hook to give you guys an idea of just what, what that looks like. Okay. So, way oversized, so we got a three odd, three x long hook here to give you guys an idea. So what we're going to do is tie in the thread. I'm using everything oversized here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use this on this one. 035 lead and we're going to tie in the back half of it right now is when you would tie in a tail but I'm basically going to show you how the weave works and how you tie in <clears throat> for the weighting and so forth go ahead and tie the, the lead along the shank you want to do it on both sides So, go ahead and cinch it down. And for the purpose of this, I'm actually going to use, on this size of fly, I'm going to use embroidery thread, or embroidery. And go ahead and get a piece of that. When you're tying on a regular ginger quill, what you want to use is flat waxed dental floss and this that will give your floss something to stick to so that it holds its shape and so forth but this is how you make the, uh, the tapered sides on this so go ahead like I say you'll use flat waxed dental floss on the smaller version for this this version we're just using embroidery You want to give it a base to wrap on. And what we're going to do is tie the back half, half of the fly. I'll actually do another video and show a semi-normal size fly. It's just a lot easier to show everybody on something this size. Okay. And go ahead and tie that off. Okay. For this version, we're going to actually tie a domino, which is a, just a black and white version. Just something to show you a little bit of the, uh, the difference in how you weave it. Go ahead and wrap the thread back. Go ahead and tie on the side. White on one side, black on the other. Okay, hopefully that comes through fairly clear. Then go ahead and wrap it to the front. And then what you're going to want to do now is go ahead and tie that off. So I'll tie it and finish it in real quick. And that's that piece of it. Now what you're going to want to do is actually turn your vise so that it's facing you like so. And I'll uh, make sure that the, the camera's set here. Hopefully that turns out. Not nah, redo it. Okay. I like to start out with thread the same lengths. You're gonna need quite a bit to do that, especially on this larger fly. Okay, you got both sides here. What you're going to want to do is look at it. You want the uh, 
obviously the lighter color on the bottom so go ahead and loop it hold it with your finger okay and go around that and then back over with the darker thread back through create a knot those first ones kind of important because you want it right there on the bend Okay, same thing there, go around, over, and then through. Okay, and you're going to want to pull those tight like that. Same thing, loop it, around, over, and through. Just continue this all the way up the shank, pulling those tight and covering all the areas. Around, over the top with the darker, and then through. You kind of just lay them on there and then pull them tight. But always loop with the lighter color. It's easier on the bottom. And then go over the top and back through. Once you've got that, you can kind of let go of everything and then just center it. Okay. Like that. Over the top and through. And this is just a simple overhand weave. Okay. You can do a number of different woven body flies like this, but this is the old uh, version that was tied for by Hank Roberts actually developed a long time ago I actually haven't tied one of these in probably 40 years so it takes a little bit of it a little bit to get used to again These are quite time consuming to tie, but it's worth it. I just wanted to show you guys what they what they look like. Now what you would do on a regular uh, version of this, since I'm just showing you the weave now, is uh, you would have already tied in your tail and your hackle that's going to go on the back side of this that you wrap halfway up. And then you can actually finish those. I'll show you at what point you would do that. But like I say, this is just to show you how the weave goes. And you can always straighten this out a little bit later. This is not... You just want to make sure that you've got it tight. And when you're using dental floss on a smaller version of this, it uh, sticks considerably better. And I think that's the key is I don't think many people use the dental floss as the underbody. Or it was never, I guess, pass, passed down, if you will, so that everybody got used to the basic version of that. Okay. Might take a different version of this with it facing towards so it gives you guys a little bit better better version of that mm, you can see how easy that is once you get going it's more of a a pain in the butt to kind of get your bearings with you and try and figure out specifically. It's easier though if you do hold it underneath the the shank and then just come around the top like that. And this is one of those patterns that it's easier to use more material as you're doing this than less because you're looping over fingers and stuff. 
but you'll find a pattern that you can uh, get used to and it works fairly easy. But like I say, I'm just used to going the, the finger hold underneath. And it makes something that's actually very pretty too. Um, what I can do actually is show you how to do a, uh, a pot sweep too on a scud. I don't know many of the, the patterns anymore that you use them. This is just the old school stuff. As the leads get shorter, it's a little bit more of a pain in the ass. Excuse me. Okay. What we're going to do with this one is I'm going to go right to the edge of that where I put the uh, put the lead in for the holder and then we'll go ahead and tie it off. You have to tie your thread back on in order to tie it off. I almost cut my leads too short. I don't use time as big a fly. But these hold together very well. And when you're <coughs> tying with floss, it's easier when you use on a smaller version to use four strand. And like I say, I'll go ahead and show you that at a different time. But this is just the basics of the weave. Okay. And since I'm right at the end of that, I'm going to go ahead and tie this off. You can see that. Tie your thread back in. I'm using big shears here. Go ahead and pull it over and tie it. And this is where you would be once you tie this off. This is where you would be tying in your hackle. You would be winding it from the back towards the front and tying it off, and then you trim it in uh, in the short tails. But you can kind of see how that works. And it's easier when you're using the dental floss underneath, too. You can see the different uh, where you miss, and you can just move the thread around. There you go. And that's the basics of how you do that weave. straightened out with your fingers but the key there is the lead underneath to get a nice flat flat stone fly look to it you can use that on a number of different uh, different flies perfect